it's Sunday morning, just gone 10 o'clock, we're all set, we're all uh, all in the car, ready to go everybody? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good. Uh, we're actually heading to try and go across from Mabel Lake um, in BC, across to, first over to Sugar Lake, and then see if we can navigate around Sugar Lake and over to Arrow Lake. Um, there's some very, very small uh, marking, mark trails on our back road map books, but you know what, uh, never trust the back road map books 100%, uh, they're there as a guide. So yeah, we'll uh, show you the start of the trail when we get on it, and we're gonna add air down and make sure we're all set for the Forest Service Road. So we'll speak to you when we arrive. So we've just arrived at the entrance of the Forest Service Road. Um, have you seen, we just set the, uh, the commercial radio to channel 23. Um, cha commercial radios are really important to have when you're on Forest Service Road, especially if it's active logging. Uh, set it, make sure you call when you're supposed to, let the truckers know that are coming down with big full loads that you're on your way up. And if you can, pull over and let them pass you. So we're gonna go and air down now. We're gonna go air down to about 23 pounds and we'll see how that goes for us. Hi, monkey. So we've recently partnered up with uh, with Richard from Freedom Recovery Gear, and I've got to say, some of the things that he's actually designed are absolutely fantastic. It's obviously been designed by somebody that uses it all the time. So we're going to wear down now using our our new Freedom Recovery Gear um, tire deflator. You'll notice some certain things. It's not brass. It's got a longer cord, and look at that. The actual gauge is the right way up. One cool thing about it as well, you can't tell right now, but it's actually, uh, it illuminates. What's the name for that? Illuminescence? I believe that's right, but in the dark it glows. <laughs> so let's give it a try. So one thing that uh, Justin from Trip in a Van um, explains, never ever put this in your mouth when you're actually airing down. Dogs do some crazy things to your wheels. Thanks for that, Justin. You hold it the wrong way, didn't you? Sorry? You went to adjust it yeah. for it being the wrong way. Yeah, I'm, I'm so used to using an ARB, which the gauge is that way around, so you have to bend the actual tubing. This one is not only the right way around, but it's also got a swivel on it as well. So it's a lot easier to do. We're going to go down to about 23 PSI. There we go, that's good. All you now have to do is put the valve stem back in. Because by unscrewing that at the beginning, you actually take the valve stem out of the valve itself. Give it a good twist, and then you can take it all off. I do have to say that it being chromed is a lot easier to use than it being brass. The brass ones stick quite a lot. And then don't forget to put this back on. The valve cover is very important. And would you always carry extra valve covers? Yes, well, so in Richard's actual kit, um, he actually gives you some extra valve cores and some valve covers. It comes with the tire deflator, which I, I think is amazing. Um, it's again, it's been, it's been designed by somebody that uses it a lot. See, I'm so used to doing it that way. I also have to say that the air coming out of it comes out a lot quicker with this, a lot quicker. There we go, and again, just put the valves core back in again. Is there any tips you would give someone for putting the valve core back in if they haven't aired down very many times? Well the good thing about this is you can't really go wrong because the valve core doesn't come out of the actual device. Um, I know there's some people 
uh, that actually just take the core out. Um, the trouble with that is if you lose that core, then your tyre deflates totally and you can't actually um, pump it back up again. So be careful and don't lose them. Like we just said, Richard does actually, when you buy the kit, you actually get quite a lot of other things. There's some extra valve covers. Um, in fact, there's two sets of valve covers in there. That's a, a valve core remover. There's some valve cores in there. Um, and we do have to show you this because this is pretty cool. Richard's actually gone to the detail of putting his logo on the chrome valve covers, which I guess we should put on. That is pretty cool, though, isn't it? It comes with that. It's great that it's in an actual resealable bag. Yeah, but that comes with the kit. Yeah. One of the things that happens when you're on the roads back in the in the woods on the forestry service roads, the RR, which is the commercial channel, changes. So when you're coming to different roads and you take spurs off, you've got to make sure that you keep up with the actual road number. Luckily there, it's still on RR23, so we're still on the correct channel. But the road off to the left right now actually changes to RR24. So you've got to keep up with changing your channels. We've gone this way before. You can see this little orange line um, over to Siglet Lake. It's over this way. Last time we were there, it was incredibly cold. Um, but it's quite high in elevation, and we're planning on going right down over to Sugar Lake, which is technically Cherryville. So we've kind of gone from Lumpy to Cherryville, uh, just not the way Highway 6 goes. That's right, yeah. A little bit more interesting than just driving down the highway. A lot less traffic as well. So we are under 900 meters, uh, 880 or so right now. We're still on the way over to Sugar Lake, um, but so there is consistently snow at this we point. Are way on Sugar Lake, Mama. So we're still on our way to uh, Sugar Lake. We've not actually got there yet. Um, we're below 900 meters and there is snow. We were really hoping by now that the snow had gone. The good thing is it's it's hard packed. Um, how high are we? Uh, we're actually 910 meters. So I was wrong again, but I'm used to that. So we're, we were around 900 meters. Um, and as you can see, we'll drop some footage in from the front camera. Um, a snowmobile would probably be more adept at doing what we uh, what we're attempting to do right now but hey it's all fun we've got the right recovery gear um, so if we do get stuck we can get out and then if we if we really are in trouble we've also got our Garmin sitting next to us so we're all good it is April though it's getting a little bit old it is yeah yeah we've uh, it's not been a bad winter though not really that is not drivable no I guess we'll be going back the other way, but how will that connect if what we won't really Daddy? get? So we've come, I don't know, we're probably 18 kilometers up the road right now and we've come to a dead end. Uh, we missed the turning, um, the turning is there. So that's the actual turning we should have taken and you can see why we missed it. Doesn't really look like a road right now. Um, 
but yeah so we've we've missed that turn in and the problem is there is a connecting road further on as I'll show you and we kind of missed it here so this is the actual connecting road along but we continued on where it looked drivable um, you'll see from our video from the front of the camera before we turned around up over here but it still continuing in elevation and chances are we won't be able to get that connecting road. Hey, there's no video. Yeah, so I don't know what, whether we head back down and we look for somewhere else, but that's part of it, isn't it? You know, the journey doesn't end at the summit even though we didn't get to the summit. As you can see behind me, that does not look hard packed. It looks still like we are not gonna make it up that way. Again, it's not a major road when we actually look at the Guy GPS or the background map books. So we knew it wasn't gonna be as traveled. Um, we've been fortunate that we've been following a snowmobile track, which has allowed some of it for being hard packed. But realistically, we're gonna to have to go back further down and either maybe connect by the farm, the ranch, um, to where we turned off before and go that way. But realistically, we might not get up high enough in elevation. We're in the lower section of British Columbia, but it's April <laughs> and it's a little bit early to actually be heading out to do some wheeling. Um, although technically this wouldn't be wheeling if it was dry. A lot of people would say this is driving down a forest reservice road. Um, but for us, it's still an adventure. It's still a chance to get out with the kids to do something a little bit different. But I think we're going to just gonna change our plans a little bit and find somewhere else to go have lunch for the day. How did that go? Well, I don't think we're getting up there. No, I don't. Seeing we're parked on the road here and the snow to the road over there is to the height of my window. So no, I don't think we're getting up there either. So we may have to rethink. I think we probably head down to lower elevations, maybe head up Maple Lake Road a bit more, maybe go to the secret beach. We could do that. Secret Beach! You want to go to Secret Beach? Yeah. Yeah? Do some fishing? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, let's do that then. Let's head down. So we were just discussing off camera because that's apparently what we do. We have conversations without having the camera actually on. That we've dropped 200 meters in elevation. We're all 780 meters up now. And it's dry, there's just some mud, totally fine. You wouldn't know that just further down the road it's gonna be completely hard packed snow. I think when she means further down the road, I think further up the road, Further that way. <laughs> Further back that way. <laughs> Further some way on the road. Further away from the main road. Where we were. Down the road. <laughs> not where we are. Exactly. So when we were there, we were there. Yeah. Yeah, not now, because we're here. No. That's right. Now we have mud flying up the side of the car, yeah, not we do. snow. This is one design fault of a Jeep, that you, when you put bigger wheels and tires on, the sides of the Jeep get absolutely hammered with mud and you can't physically get into the car without getting covered in it. There's a couple modifications that we haven't done that we have been saying we were going to do. Namely, mud flaps. Mud flaps, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, we're nearly back at the Maple Lake Road. We're going to head up to is it called? Something Cascade? Cascade Falls, I think. Ah, Cascade Falls, there you go. I was almost right. I um, think. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we're both not sure. Uh, yeah. Before that, we might drop into the Mabel Lake um, Provincial Park just to see how that's going. Um, we're about what, 15 minutes away. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to eat it. One of the funny, um, this area um, on. Yeah just below Mabel Lake, as you're coming up to Mabel Lake. It used to be owned by a family, and a lot of the area used to be owned by a family called? Proctors. And I might happen to know one of those. Do you know a Proctor? <laughs> you might know a Proctor. 
Who's that then? <laughs> I'm a descendant of the Proctors. Uh, we're actually just passing the Hannah Fry School, um, which I believe was my great great grandmother. Siglitz and the Proctors are two really old families from this area. So there's Siglet Lake up this way. Um, I believe there's a Proctor Creek. There's definitely Proctor, Proctor Road. Road. <laughs> Um, we're also going to be passing the Hewers, which have also been here for a really long time. But all this land all around here at one, one point in time was owned by three or four different families. Yeah. So there's a lot of history, um, including the old Proctor Barns, which one collapsed, I think, one or two winters ago. Yeah. Which, these are the old Proctor Barns that we were talking about. And behind me over this way is the one that collapsed a couple winters ago. Uh, I don't know if somebody's actually purchased this because it used to be for sale signs here. And that's the old house over that way. And a little bit of history is that my great grandfather used to check the level of the water. And if he felt underneath his bed and it was wet, then he knew that he had to move. <laughs> uh, this area is really prone to flooding. Um, we're at April right now. It's probably about May when it's going to get high water, probably into June actually. But this area is really prone to flooding and the barns have been here forever. And it's been a little bit of an issue with having people trespassing. So there is no trespassing signs. They ask you not to go in the barns. People have taken barn wood from them before, which is really sad. Um, but it's not currently in use as a farm anymore. But it's a really nice thing that you can pass on the way out to go check out Maple Lake Provincial Park or the surrounding areas. So there's a lot of really good history and really nice views to go and check out when you're out this way. But it's some really interesting history and there are actually a couple of books about it in the area that I believe you can pick up from the actual museum. So there's two volumes of it. Okay, that is something I bit. didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that, so. But you can learn a little bit about it and um, I think anybody who's been into Ida's Bakery you can see a lot of photos from Lumby and the surrounding area when it was really I guess wagons and horses yeah <laughs> yeah when they were definitely trails And the boat's coming, and you get it in fast away from the boat. What? Are you casting your fish out or catching it in? Caught Beth Ann. Yeah. So we're just down here by Mabel Lake, actually at the provincial park. Um, camping doesn't start till May the 1st, but you can still come down to do uh, day use. It's a beautiful park. Um, I'll throw some pictures in for you. And it's also a beautiful lake.
So as you can see, there's quite a few different little campsites at this area. Um, I don't believe this is actually Provincial Park. I think this is actually just a rec site. And this is Cascade Falls. It's just your marker 16. And this area is absolutely gorgeous. It's normally really busy on long weekends and other such things, but there's quite a few different little sites nestled in between the trees. There's one right by the beach, and I'll just show you a couple of them. We have a couple of other vehicles here, um, but you can get some really nice spots where you can camp and you can overlook the lake. And then there's a few that are nestled in by the trees. I believe there is one outhouse up here, quite a further ways up, but there's no service for cell phone, there is no electric or anything like that. It's quite a tight switchback to actually get in and it's letting you drive past the road really easily, but it's a really nice spot if you're not on a long weekend because people do come here like Friday or probably even Thursday on a long weekend just to get a spot. But it's a really, really nice little location where it's not as busy as the typical provincial park, so highly worth it if you're in the area because wouldn't it be nice to have your coffee right by the lake? Did you enjoy that kids? Yeah. Yeah? What do we call the beach? Rock beach. Rocky beach? <laughs> yeah, because there's lots of rocks on it. There are, yes. Lots of rocks. Who stepped in the water? Me. Did you? Yeah. Did you get wet feet? Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Did mummy solve the problem for you? Yeah. What did she do? <laughs> Who changed your pants? <laughs> so I believe that was called Cascade Falls Recreation Site? I believe so. I would say that it's probably camping, adequate camping spots for maybe eight vehicles. Yeah, yeah, maximum eight, I would say. Um, but obviously sometimes people come loaded up in their vehicles, so there might not be quite that many once everybody's tent is out. But it is fairly popular because it's not that far from even Maple Lake. Um, so it's off, right off of Maple Lake, but Maple Lake Provincial Park. So it's really not that far from Lumbee. So it's quite a common destination on long weekends and things like that. But earlier in the season you can definitely find camping spots there but most of the summer it'll probably be pretty full it's a shame you can't get down to what i can see down here because there's some gorgeous beach spots down there i guess you need a boat or you need to be willing to walk no you're <laughs> not walking down there you might be able to lower yourself down on the winch no i meant from where we were on the actual beach along it Walk in it. Was it cold, Bethan? Me and I walked in it and it was freezing. Was it? Yeah. Why did we walk in it and Mummy and Death and not walk in it? Because they had shoes. And what have we got? We had wellies. Well, wellies. Because <laughs> Mummy and Devin did not have their wellies. No, we didn't have our wellies on. There is another wreck site, uh, but before this, so we're about uh, 16 down Maple, and there's one probably around 13, which is Cascade Beach, but I believe it's just like a walk-in, set up your tent kind of campsite, and that's just closer back towards Maple Lake Provincial Park. And then there is another one further down, which is about 24, I believe, down Mabel. And that's called Cottonwood, I believe. We're gonna head back now down some different roads. So we will turn around if the four-wheel drive system will let me. It doesn't like turning when it's in four-wheel drive. No. No. And I, I never remember taking it out. Doesn't like it. We will say that out this way, there is an abundance of mosquitoes, so do bring bug repellent if you're coming in the summer. Did we do that? I think we have bug repellent, but we didn't put any on. 
I'm saying in the summer, you definitely want to put yeah. it on though. <laughs> So the, the road that we're on right now, I would say is probably decommissioned because we believe the drainage has been taken out. But we came down this originally because there was a washout and we wanted to get to Cascade Falls wreck site. How many years ago was that? Probably three. Was it three years ago? Been at our place for three and a half. Yeah, I guess it was. Somewhere around there. So this was actually quite a well-maintained road while the, the washout on the main Mabel Lake Road was uh, was fixed. Um, and when we say washout, we mean half the side of the mountain disappeared. So this was the only way past that point up to the other wreck sites. So it was quite well-maintained then, but obviously since Mabel Lake Road's been open again for the last two years. Yeah. Yeah. This has deteriorated quite quickly. But uh, it's a bit of fun. It's not really off-roading, we've just had a discussion of what off-roading is, and I guess that's different to everybody. But we have really decided that if you're looking for hardcore off-roading, we're probably not the people to watch. <laughs> <laughs> we do touring, <laughs> as you described. Yeah, if we have a roof foot tent at all, we're left on top of, of the Jeep by the oh, time this is finished. Because that's going to be tight. Way more you made your window way more dirtier. I think this is called the redneck car wash. <laughs> Isn't that right? Redneck pinstriping, yeah. Um, and it cannot we're not afraid of getting our, our vehicle car. scratched or anything like that. We're not afraid of, you know, having to use four wheel drive or having articulation or any description. But we don't go out of our way to places that are pretty much impossible to yeah, I mean, it's to us, we, there's got to be a destination. So, a destination is a lake or a river or something to see at the end of it. There's no point in just destroying your vehicle for the sake of it. Not in my eyes, I mean. <laughs> we have a very vocal four year old in the back seat right now. You can probably see arms flailing around and. Gonna have a fuller back seat in the summer. Oh yeah, we've got. In fact, we've got a full car now. There's five of us in the car. We are not trained professionals. Please obtain professional training if you are unfamiliar with the operation of a chainsaw. In BC, this is the only good use for a trasheroo because you can't leave trash in it, otherwise you get furry, big, um, uninvited guests. I'd say when clearing um, trees from the road, don't just clear as much to get you through. I think it could be an emergency vehicle, clear more. Yeah, so if you take a look at the tree, there's a lot of 
weight on this bottom end. So if you're going to cut straight through from the top, at some point your blade's going to get pinched. So if you cut the V first, it allows the tree to fall, and then you cut up, which finishes the cut. And you don't pinch your blade. I look like an idiot. Notice that he did it in shorter lengths so it's easier for us to actually move the pieces out and he's going to do another section and we're going to watch again how he did that little cut. So we're doing the same again. still stable it's going nowhere and if you watch at one point you'll see the tree start to move and that's when it cracks no <laughs> Did you see it started to move then see it's very controlled there we go safe clean the kids are up to something We'll go see what they're up to. What you doing? Huh? Shenanigans. full of sawdust. Just have to be careful of the exhaust now. When off-roading with a uh, rooftop tent on, you have to actually think in totally three dimensions. It's not just forward and, be and backwards in uh... Now, you've got to think the third dimension height. And there we go, we're coming back out to Maple Re Lake Road, I believe, very soon. Yeah, I think we're just going to be popping onto it now. Are we on Maple Lake Road? Almost. So we did say we, we, there was five in the car, but you're probably wondering why you couldn't see the fifth person. Well, that's because they're not quite here yet. So yeah, there's another one expected in... August. August. So. We're trying to work out how we can fit five people and all their gear into a Jeep for overlanding. So if you've got any uh, advice on that one, let us know. But uh, yeah, you'll be seeing another edition very, very soon. We'll send, uh, send some more updates on the bump out. <laughs> we're very excited to meet the newest edition and we're gonna have a bit of a struggle getting a combination of car seats and boosters in the back of a Wrangler. We're right, but that's not the main problem right now. The main problem is she won't let me find out what sex it is. So um, it's going to be a real surprise this time. So nobody knows. Well, our midwife knows, but we don't know. So it's a bit annoying, but we'll live with it. Yeah. Brought to you in part by... And remember, the journey doesn't end at the summit.